All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Logic. This episode is going to be about sound or cogent. Is your argument sound or cogent? Well, you know, arguments can be divided into two groups, deductive arguments and inductive arguments. Now, what's the difference? As you've learned in the last videos, deductive arguments, if you assume that the premise is true, then it would be impossible for the conclusion to be false. Now, in inductive arguments, if you assume the premises are true, it would be improbable that the conclusion is false. The impossible and probable, the impossible and probable. Okay, indicator words for deductive arguments, words like definitely, it's certainly the case that, it's absolutely the case that. In contrast to inductive arguments, it's probably true that, it's reasonable to believe that, it's plausible that, such and such is the case, or it's possible that such and such is the case. You see, probabilistic reasoning or necessary reasoning. Okay, so arguments, deductive, inductive. You hear with that now? Another note, the strongest type of argument you want is a deductive argument, right? I mean, if the premises are true, it would be impossible for the conclusion to be false. And it's also strong arguments or inductive arguments, but just not as strong as deductive arguments. Okay, now how do you get a good deductive argument and a good inductive argument? Well, that's a good question. You already know from our other videos how to evaluate and grade an argument. You know, one, you separate the premise and the conclusion, and two, you examine the premises. And what do you do when you examine the premises? Well, you ask two questions. Do they support the conclusion, and are they true? Okay, so another way to look at deductive and inductive arguments, you want the, the strongest argument, the sound argument, and this one's also as strong, but it's just not as strong as a sound argument because it's probabilistic reason. That's cogent. So if you want to get off the ground, get moving, you first need valid, then it goes to sound. Or you need a strong argument, then it goes to cogent argument. These are steps up the ladder to the best argument. Another way to look at it, if you want to go from deductive and work your way up to a sound argument, you ask these questions. Boom. First question, does the premise support the conclusion? If so, then it's valid. Next step, you want to go up higher, you go, boom, are the premises true? If they're true, now you got a sound argument. Likewise with inductive arguments, first question, boom, do the premise support the conclusion? If so, it's strong. Next question, boom, are they true? If so, cogent. You'll get all this in time. So things to remember, deductive, it goes to valid and then sound. Inductive, goes strong and then cogent. Now, if you don't have a valid, it's invalid. If you don't have a sound argument, it's unsound. Take a look at this picture here. If it's not strong, then it's weak. If it's not cogent, then it's uncogent. Okay, very good. All right, let's jump right in there and get our hands dirty. Let's do some practice problems. And just to start out, we're just going to focus on deductive arguments. We're going to work our way up to a sound argument. We'll start with deductive. Okay, here is a valid deductive argument. Remember, we went over deductive arguments. This is a categorical syllogism. Now, a line separates the conclusion. Okay, for the first step to see if it's valid, we're just going to assume that the premises are true. Just assume the premises are true. And if they're true, it would be impossible for the conclusion to be false. That's how we'll determine if it's valid. Now, here's another example of a valid argument. Now, in this argument, the premises are not true, as you'll see, but they do support the conclusion. Now, if we assume that the premises are true, then it's impossible for the conclusion to be false. The, the argument, all rabbits are reptiles, all reptiles are blue, therefore, all rabbits are blue. For example, if you take this group of rabbits, if all rabbits are reptiles, okay, so the rabbits are reptiles, and all the reptiles are blue, or in a group of blue things, then all rabbits are also in a group of blue things, you see. Now, there are other ways of recognizing this. You'll just recognize the form later in the future, like this is a categorical syllogism, and you'll know things like monus ponens, monus tollens, etc. But for now, you can just draw circles. Really help you out. It's a good technique. Let's continue. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention, as you'll notice by this argument here, validity has nothing to do with truth. So you can have a valid argument that's totally false. Okay, all that matters is the form of the argument 
If we assume they're true, it's impossible for the conclusion to be false. Again, validity is not correlated with truth. Okay, valid arguments can have true premises and true conclusion, or false premise and true conclusion, or false premise and a false conclusion. Okay, there's one thing that a valid, premise, a valid argument cannot have. It cannot have true premise and a false conclusion. Any deductive argument that has true premises and a false conclusion, it's an invalid argument. Here's an example of an invalid deductive argument. You'll notice this is an example of this rule. It has true premise and a false conclusion. Also, you can press pause any time in this video if you need more time to examine the arguments. Now, it's not necessary that the premise be actually true and the conclusion actually false for the argument to be invalid. But if it's merely possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false, then the argument is invalid. Here's an example. As you'll notice in this argument, all three statements are true, but it is possible for the premise to be true and the conclusion false. For instance, remember the, the circle trick. All cats are animals. So you have all animals, you have all cats. So you say all cats are animals. Next premise, all mammals are animals. So here's all mammals. All mammals are animals. Now the conclusion says all cats are mammals, but the cats are not in the mammal circle. So the conclusion is false. Okay, so look, we're trying to get to valid. Now, validity is determined by the relationship between the premise and the conclusion. In a valid argument, the premise supports the conclusion, regardless of whether or not these premises are true. See, a valid argument reflects good reasoning and an invalid argument reflects bad reasoning. Okay, let's do some more practice here. Is this argument valid or invalid? Now you can push pause and then answer the question, and I'll give you the answer in three, two, one. The answer is, it's valid, that's right. If you assume that the snakes are in the reptiles group, and you assume that the reptiles are in the animals group, then the snakes would also be in the animals group. Very good. All right, another practice problem. All snakes are reptiles, all snakes are animals, therefore all reptiles are animals. Is this argument valid or invalid? The answer is, that's correct, it's invalid. If the snakes are inside the animals group, and the animals group are inside the reptiles group, then the premise would be false, that all reptiles are animals. See, all the reptiles are not in the animals group. So this proves that the argument is invalid. All right, here's another practice problem. All animals are dogs. All dogs are pit bulls. Therefore, all pit bulls are animals. Is this argument valid or invalid? Press pause, because the answer is, that's right, this argument is invalid. As you notice, both premises are actually false. But if you were to assume that they're true, then the animals would have to go inside the pit bulls group. The valid conclusion would be that all animals are pit bulls. All right, here's another practice problem. All pit bulls are poodles. All poodles are dogs. Therefore, all pit bulls are dogs. Is this argument valid or invalid? The answer is, that's correct. It's valid. Now, of course, the first premise is false, but you still got a valid argument. All pit bulls are not poodles. But if you assume that they're true, they do support the conclusion. If you assume that pit bulls are poodles, and that all poodles are dogs, then all pit bulls are also in the dog circle. All right, well, here's another practice problem. Some pit bulls are dogs. Some dogs are Labradors. Therefore, some pit bulls are Labradors. Is this argument valid or invalid? Press pause, because the answer is, that's correct, the argument is invalid. Note that the premises are actually true and the conclusion is actually false. And as you remember, any such argument is invalid. All right, here's another practice problem for you. Some pit bulls are mammals, all mammals are animals, therefore some pit bulls are animals. Is this argument valid or invalid? 
Press pause, because the answer is valid. That's correct, it's valid. The first premise, of course, is false, but if you assume that at least one pit bull is a mammal, and that all the mammals are inside the animals group, then at least one pit bull would have to be inside the animals group. Okay, pretty good on this. Let's turn to the next one. So you know how to get to a valid argument. Let's go to the next question. Are the premises true? So if you get to a valid argument, that's if the premises support the conclusion, now you're at valid. If you get true premises, it's said to be sound. For example, this argument is sound. It's valid. You found out the valid with the circles. Also, the premises are true. So if these two premises support the conclusion and these two are true, then it's a sound argument. Is it true that some pit bulls are mammals? Yes. It's also true that all mammals are animals. Therefore, it's a sound argument, the strongest argument you can get. Now, if, if this was invalid, it didn't support the conclusion, or one of these was false, you would have an unsound argument. For example, remember this argument? This argument is invalid, therefore it's unsound. All invalid arguments are unsound. And this argument is unsound because it has a false premise right here. All pit bulls are poodles. All right, so that's it. You guys got it. A sound argument is a perfectly good deductive argument. Now the premises are true and the premises support the conclusion, so the conclusion is true as well. So it's a simple step. Just If it's a deductive argument, just check for validity and then check to see if the premises are true. Okay, let's just run a few practice problems to see if you can figure out if an argument is sound or unsound. All right, listen to this argument. All cats are mammals. All mammals are animals. Therefore, all cats are animals. Is this argument valid or invalid? The answer is valid. That's correct. If you assume the premises are true, then the conclusion has to be true. All right, is this argument sound or unsound? Press pause because the answer is sound. Correct. The argument is valid and both premises are true, so the argument is sound. All right, listen to this argument. All snakes are mammals. All mammals are animals. Therefore, all snakes are animals. Is this argument valid or invalid? Press pause because the answer is that's correct, it's valid. If you assume that the premises are true, then the conclusion has to be true. Okay, is this argument sound or unsound? Press pause because the answer is, it's unsound, that's correct. The argument is valid, but the first premise is false. So the argument is unsound. Okay, here's another practice problem. Listen to this argument. All cats are mammals. All cats are animals. Therefore, all mammals are animals. Is this argument Valid or invalid? The answer is correct. The argument is invalid. You see, you could arrange the premises this way. The conclusion does not necessarily follow from the premise. Therefore, it's invalid. All right, well, is this argument sound or unsound? The answer is, that's right, it's unsound. All invalid arguments are unsound. Well, here's another practice problem. Listen to this argument. All mammals are cats. All cats are animals. Therefore, all mammals are animals. Now, is this argument valid or invalid? The answer is correct, it's valid. The conclusion follows necessarily from the premise. Now, the next question is, is this argument sound or unsound? The answer is, that's right, the argument's unsound, because the first premise is false. All right, here's another practice problem. Listen to this argument. All mammals are animals. All snakes are mammals. Therefore, all snakes are animals. Is this argument valid or invalid? That's right, it's valid. Now this one may be a little bit tricky. Uh, if you read the second premise first, then you'll see that the conclusion does follow necessarily from the premise. And so the next question is, is this argument sound or unsound? The answer is sound. That's correct, it's sound. The argument is valid and both premises are true. So the argument is sound. Here's another practice problem for you. Listen to this argument. Some pit bulls are dogs, all dogs are animals, therefore all pit bulls are animals. Is this argument valid or invalid? The answer is invalid. That's correct. The conclusion that would follow validly would be that some pit bulls are animals. 
So the next question is, is the argument sound or unsound? The answer is, you're right, it's unsound. The argument is invalid, and all invalid arguments are unsound. Wow, did we cover a lot in 15 minutes? That is very good. Good job. I think you're great at deductive, valid, and sound. Next video, we're going to go into inductive, strong, and cogent. We didn't get to cover it all in this video, but way to go. That's great. See you in the next one, and that's all.